Hi, friends. Stop! Sorry. Kyle. <laughs> I feel like you're gonna do it again. I'm not. Okay. Hello and. Hi, friends. Stop! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, well, I know we're serious. We're serious. We're serious. Right. Hello and welcome back to Naturally Catholic. My name is Heather. This is Kyle. If you guys are new, welcome. If you're new, you know that she don't know that she gets mad when I do this. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Every Thursday now? Yes. Okay. Did we miss last Thursday? No. Today's Thursday. I know. It's not, are you going to post it tonight? We just posted a day late last Thursday. See, that's what uh, I'm saying. Get with it. We post every Thursday, and if we were late in the past, we're going to be on time from now on, okay? We're we going to try. We got a lot of kids, a lot of things going on in the, in, I almost said our last name. We got a lot of things going on in this household. That's right. So we will try our best to do it every Thursday. But join us. Subscribe to this channel. Turn the notifications on. That way you can be notified when him and I put a video out. I also post other videos about lifestyle, motherhood, homeschooling, yada, 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 cloth diapers, all kinds of stuff. So join us. Join us. Yeah. Yes, friends. So today what we wanted to talk about is... Um, what what can we do as as Catholics as people um, to forgive ourselves, right? Because oftentimes we can forgive others, but sometimes the, the most critical person in our lives is us. Mm -hmm. And so, I just wanted to point out, he's not this short, okay? We're he, talking about forgiveness. We forgive you for being so short. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. sitting on a stool. I'm, I'm standing just, on my tippy toes right now. I just wanted to point that out. Um, I'm standing. So. <laughs> But so anyways, um, oftentimes in our lives, right, as we, as we become parents or as we, you know, th this whole topic kind of started with Heather and I um, sitting around having coffee, looking out the window, just talking about where we're at now and where we've come from and just thinking about how fortunate and how blessed we are and how much there, how much we have changed as people over the course of the yeah, last not decade. Yeah, just individually, but Yeah, I mean, as a family, too. marriage, as people, and so... Um, in conversations I've had with, with other people, I hear a lot of regret and I hear a lot of people who are, who can't forgive themselves for opportunities they missed or things that they did. Um, and, and to me, I, I just, that always is, is such a tough struggle. I know because I used to deal with that very much. So, and so I just feel like it's a good topic to talk with others about, because I know that if Heather and I have struggled with that or have thought about that, that many other people have a difficult time forgiving themselves as well and moving forward. And so part of the beauty of our faith and part of the beauty of Christ's suffering is that when we bring that, you'll hear people, you know, say, you know, metaphorically, leave it at the foot of the cross, right? And what do they mean? And basically, when you have something you're, you're praying for or you're trying to be a better person, and you pray for the Lord to give you grace to overcome certain things or to not dwell in your past, right? Because it has a way of pulling you back down and keeping you blinded from the present and making the necessary changes. So leaving it at the cross is just that. It's once you've prayed about it, once you've made penance for certain things that you've done or things you can't forgive yourself for, you really have to strive to let them go and to not focus on them. It's like St. Augustine said, you pray as if everything depends on God and you work as if everything depends on you. So you do your part in prayer or you do your part in prayer and you do your part when it comes to really striving to not be stuck in the past and to, to forgive yourself. So I don't know if that, that makes you know sense to you, sense. you know? I was just staring at your, your hair sticking out right there. Oh, the yeah, whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Talking about past regret, do you have any past regret that you wish you could change or you wish you might have done differently? So when it comes to past regret, right, it's a pretty loaded term. And so some people can have past regret for the actions they did. Some people can have past regret for the opportunities they didn't take. Some people can have past regret for um, how they treated others or didn't spend time with others in their lives. And unfortunately, sometimes those people are gone or those relationships are not salvageable. Um, I pray that those are if you find yourself in that situation, but sometimes that's just how it is. If bridges get burnt too bad, sometimes they can't be repaired. 
Um, so for me personally, yes, of course, I can look back and think about things I would have done differently. But the thing is that you hear people say hindsight's 2020. So I try to take that same mantra and apply it to as I look forward. And, and it's not always easy in a certain situation if you, you just come home from work and your kids are running up to you and they want to show you something. They want to play a game with you that you made. And you're just sometimes just, you know, hold on, buddy. Like I just walked in, hold on, hold on. Um, and if you do that too many times, you're going to get older and realize that young boy's no longer running up to you anymore with that game because you have told him so many times, hold on. It's kind of like the cat in the cradle song, right? Um, and so our old man, take a look at my life. That might be it. I don't know. But either way, the point is this. Instead of... Um, Use the hindsight that's 2020, the things that you would have changed and try to apply those now. Um, and so I'm not saying every time you have to drop everything whenever your kids are, are running up to you to do something, because it's, it's, if you did that, you'd never be able to have any time to do anything. But it's a matter of if you're saying no more times than you're saying yes, then that should give you pause. If you're um, spending more time doing your own self-indulgent things before bedtime as opposed to talking with your kids, praying with your kids, playing with your kids, telling them a bedtime story, that should give you pause. And so I think the important thing, um, and, and I'm not trying to turn this into something uh, away from what we're talking about, but I guess it's just the regret that you have in the past, use that as fodder or fuel to try to make sure in the present as you continue to progress, you won't look back with the same kind of feelings 10 years from now, five years from now. Yeah. Um, yeah, that can be a hard one for moms too. I know for me, you know, I wake up every morning with like a list of things that I need to get done. And you know, in my head, these things are so important. And I forget that the kids and their silly little things, their plays or their magic tricks or their cute little drawing or story that they want to show me are the reason why I do all of those things. It's not because you know, I get joy out of just doing cleaning all day and doing whatever. It's because I'm doing it for my children. And so I think for me, I try to be more present too, so that I don't look back and say, oh my gosh, I missed all those chances to sit down and just be goofy and play and, you know, and take the time to listen to their stories or play their little games that they made. Harper, our oldest one, he likes to make board games and he begs us to play them. Like yes. Every day. <laughs> and we're and, and the rules like and the rules minutes. change every game. Yes. So it's very difficult. Yeah. Um, but and so that's a good point too, as we look at the present, that can also help to heal us from the past. And the other thing is that as we continue to grow as people, if we're the same that we were five years ago, six, seven, ten years ago, then we should think about that as well. Am I it, because we as people, as we continue to grow in our spiritual life, as we continue to grow as husband and wife, as we continue to grow just as people, if we're not mindful of what we're doing and, and being intentional with our lives and, and we're still the same we were 10 years ago, that should give you pause too. Because if you're not growing, you're staying, you're staying stagnant, right? And so you get down in that rut. And part of the problem too that is difficult to overcome some of the things in the past is we will, we will talk ourselves down, right? Oftentimes the biggest critic of ourselves is us. The biggest yeah. liars to ourselves is us, right? We will blame others for why this. We're not good enough. We are a lot of times people have very self-defeating mindsets. And so the other thing is learn to love yourself. Learn to love yourself, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Um, and, and know that as long as you're trying, as long as you're trying, you're not a hypocrite, right? Yeah. right a priest gave a homily um, several months back and he kind of brought that point up of the difference between being a hypocrite and not is a hypocrite is somebody who tells others what they should be doing and meanwhile doesn't really try themselves. Mm -hmm. But the person who is trying might be able to help somebody else, give them some advice, but they're taking that as well. And they are trying, they Even are striving. Yeah. Even when they're failing, they still pick themselves up with the prayerful heart and intentions and they keep moving forward. And so, um, uh, so one thing would be, don't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't have negative self-talk, right? Um, and continue to, to pray and to know that God has a plan for you. And God can only work in you as much as you allow him to, as much as you move your ego aside and let him work in you. Again, the St. Augustine quote, everybody should just remember that. Pray as if everything depends on God, work as if everything depends on you. Um, and, and I guess the other thing too, when it comes to getting stuck in the past is that it's just a really, um, 
it's just a really negative thing. Uh, if you're around other family members, right, um, or friends, sometimes the difficult thing in life as we grow is you have to shed friends. You will shed people you spend time with, and it's not because you sometimes don't. Sometimes it's family. And sometimes it's family, and it's not because you don't love them. But as you grow, if somebody else is still um, doing things that you did when you were in high school, but now you're adults and you don't, there's nothing wrong with separating those things, right? Because you are the average of who you surround yourself with. And so if you look around the people you're with, you're just the average of that. And so if you're hanging around people who are doing things um, that are not where you want to be or not what you see yourself doing or not what you want to be a part of, you have to remove yourself from that, right? Even our Lord says, you know, you, you knock the dust off your sandals and you move to the next town. Now, maybe not using it in that same context, but the value is still there. And the fact that when you're spending time with people, right? Like your mom used to always say, mom, I don't know if you ever said this, but you lay down with dogs and you get fleas. Hopefully that's not like some, you know, terrible <laughs> saying, but it, it, I take it as like, if you're hanging around with people who are doing bad things, you're going to end up getting caught in the middle of it. Right. And so the easiest way to remove yourself from that is and to then make you sure stay in that relationship. You, you get flea bites. Everywhere. Everywhere. You get flea bites. Right. Yeah. Is that the next thing? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So again, and, and I guess, um, you know, throughout Heather and my uh, relationship, you know, 13 years, um, I have seen, you know, Heather and then Heather has seen me, but I've seen her change over that course of time. And it's a really awesome thing when you have somebody that you love and you have somebody you spend time with and you have somebody you've committed yourself to, to see that change in them because that is inspiring. And I think that part of that also helps you to, re to remove yourself more from who you were and become who it is God has created and intends you and wants you to be. Hmm. That's deep. I've, I've seen Kyle change as well. And I think that um, the reason why it was so noticeable when I started changing is because Kyle was looking at himself as well and saying, what can I do to be a better, better father and a better husband? And that made me want to treat you different. And, you know, and so in a relationship, if you're not growing together or this person's not doing, you know, if they're not letting go of their past and uh, not having regret and trying to move forward the, with their life and trying to improve on themselves, then it's not going to do anything for your relationship either. Does that make sense? Well, it does because think about it like this. It's, it's just the same thing with the people you hang around. You're the average of. So if you're hanging around a spouse who's doing things and you're not pleased with them, then you're not going to be pleased. And then both of y'all aren't happy. Both yeah. of y'all aren't pleased. And you just don't grow. And then you're and kind you're of stuck growing. in this rut. Yes, and you're stuck in this rut of where you're just spinning your wheels. Okay, so what would be like three things that you would recommend or say would help kind of let go of regret for someone and kind of move forward and, and doing taking the right steps to do that? Um, so I guess the first one would be to really work on forgiving yourself and stop any of the negative talk that you have. We as people are capable of so much more than we let ourselves believe because we're so used in our own fallen nature of kind of beating ourselves down. It's almost like sometimes there's two extremes. You got people who are so prideful and bombastic that they can do everything and other people like, oh, I don't know about that, you know? And you have other people who um, are so um, self-defeating when it comes to how they think about themselves that it keeps them from reaching their true potential. So I guess like Aristotle's golden mean is like try to not be overly prideful, try not to be like overly critical, but find that fine line of knowing um, that you that you can do things, that you, you can excel in ways, but you never take it to where you lord it over people as if you're the best. So that would be number one. Number two would be um, be mindful of who you're spending your time around. Um, if you're spending around your time, like, uh, again, I don't have a Facebook. Facebook, I feel like it kind of keeps you trapped in that kind of high school mindset because you're still looking at friends and what they're doing and what's going on here. And sometimes there's still the banter back and forth. About that can keep things. you in the past, too. Um, yeah, so I don't do the Facebook. Um, be mindful of who you allow um, your you, you for you to give your time to, right? Um, if you're hanging around people um, and uh, it's not, you know... The thing with me is that people oftentimes will seek advice from people that um, 
I would just say, be mindful of who it is who gives you your advice, because sometimes there's not people who you should even worry about taking their advice, nor spending time in their company. And that's not to be rude to somebody, but I think that that's a, a, that's a truism, right? We, we all are like that. I mean, if you had a person who is a hedonistic lifestyle living person, and they're your neighbor, and you're trying to raise a good Catholic family, you're going to be mindful about not going over there and partaking with that. Is that's not rude. It's just saying that we it's just have a goal. different we just have yeah. a different way of living, you know. Um, and, and so, if we're going to take the culture back, part of that is living it out, right? And not just um, being like, oh yeah, you're cool, man. You do you. You do all that cool stuff. It's it's your right as an American, which it is. They have freedom, uh, but that doesn't mean not to condone it um, or accept it. But. Um, and then I guess the, uh, so, so the second thing would just be be mindful of who you're surrounding yourself by because sometimes um, they, that can pull you back in and, and get you off track. And then the third thing would be, um, you know, confession or penance. We'll do a separate video on that one because um, that's a much deeper topic to dive into. But that's also very good for your spiritual life because we as people, um, why do you think people like to gossip? Why do you think people feel the need to talk to somebody or I just got to get this out? Because the Lord knows that there is something where we some we have that tendency to want to do that and so we have that in confession and you've which said is before nice. that saying it out loud makes you accountable for your sins so i thought that was you're taking awesome. onus of so, it yeah you know? yeah you mean it, yeah like saying it out loud and saying i i did say that about you but i mean that's you wouldn't say that to the person you'd say that in confession and it makes you feel better because you're admitting you're wrong and then you're able to correct it with penance and and the other and thing that's why confession is yeah, and I guess the other thing too would be try to live as a person who you would want to be friends with. Yeah. Who can keep a secret, who can be quiet whenever you want to talk, who can give good advice. Um, and um, and is somebody, yes, is somebody who wills the good, right? Yeah. We will the good for others, right? That's about the part of like what we're called to do. That's, that's how you love somebody is you're willing the good of them. Well, love yourself and will the good for yourself too. So be somebody who you would want to be friends with. That's why I like hanging out with you so much. That's why I love hanging but out with you. But he doesn't like hanging out with me much. Sometimes. See. Uh, but, uh, but anyways, yeah. So that's that's all I've got on that, I guess, you know. So, and I, I, I did want to make just one more. Of course. Of course one more little, one one more more little thing I'm trying here. to keep these videos under 20 minutes. I'm sorry. Okay? But I, once we get going, like. Common sense. Like a rolling common, ball. common sense has become all too uncommon. I think if we just go back to common sense ways of thinking, um, we can also help keep ourselves on the right track as well and not get stuck in the past. A lot of times the easiest or the, the easiest or most simplest answer is the solution. And so we are a country of people who are over medicated, who are over prescribed, who are over self indulgent, who are over everything. Right. And so I think okay. part of it has to be that we have got to, um, We've got to get tougher as people. We have to be mentally tough. We have to force ourselves to do things that aren't easy. We should go work with our hands. We should do these household chores. We should do these things because it's good for us. And I think that the that families would be much happier. Society would be much happier if everybody quit with this whole kind of like a poor me victim mentality and just said, life is not fair. Life is hard. There's gonna be bumps and bruises, but what a beautiful and awesome gift and joy of an experience that this is. So the other thing would be work on changing your mindset. When you get up out of bed, smile, pray, and be thankful for the day and, and go live it. The good and the bad, it's all a gift. It's all a gift. Now, I know that sounds um, contradictory, but well, it really is. It's true. And one thing I would add is um, maybe start looking at the lives of the saints and reading some of those because, I mean, they are so inspiring. And, um, I mean, there's thousands of them. So there's bound to be someone that you can relate to. You feel better now that you got that last thing out? I do. We can edit that out, but I just, I, I, no, it had to be said. That's good. There's so much goodness. If we could just sit and chat all day and you would listen to us, we would, but it's boring. We know. So we just wanted to give a few little nuggets of wisdom to um, kind of help just prepare you again as Lent is around the corner. It's just good for us to self-reflect and think about these things. How can we grow? How can we change? How can we better spouses, people, mothers? So we hope you guys enjoy this video. And um, we'll see you guys next Thursday. God bless. God bless.